Praise be to Lord Jesus Christ. Hello, how do you do? How was last one week? We had been discussing about the Christian personality over past few weeks. And now it is time to have a little more understanding about the importance of Christian conscience. So we move on to the next lesson, lesson six in your textbook, which talks about Christian conscience. Let us begin with a prayer. Please rise, fold your hands and stand for prayer. The book of Isaiah chapter 30 verse 21 says, And when you turn to the right or when you turn to the left, your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, This is the way, walk in it. Lord Jesus Christ, you have given us the words which clearly tells us that you speak to us when we have a decision to make. Lord, we have gathered here to learn more about the Christian conscience. God bless us, fill us with your Holy Spirit, grant us your wisdom to understand the importance of consciousness, the Christian conscience how it works in us and how it will help us to discern good from evil and follow the path of good. Mother Mary, please help us to understand more about the importance of conscience and follow a life filled with the grace of Lord Jesus Christ. All these we ask in name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Moving on to the next lesson. The lesson opens with a narration about Sir Thomas More. Have you heard about him? He is a saint who is considered as the patron for the politicians. He was a counselor for King Henry VIII of England. The king wanted to divorce his wife and get married to another lady and that was when Sir Thomas More couldn't agree for this because that was against his consciousness. He continued not to agree with certain terms that the king had put forth for which later he was sentenced to death by beheading. And on his death table he said, King's good servant, but God's first. That was his Christian conscience speaking. To understand what is conscience, I'll draw your attention towards an incident that we all are well familiar with. The scene is the Garden of Eden, where the Eve is being tempted by the Satan. The Satan tells her, you eat this fruit from the tree that determines the good and the evil, nothing is going to happen. But she says, no, God told we should not eat this. But Satan answers, he was just lying because he didn't want you to become like him. This was the scene. And now, let me ask you to remove Satan from the picture, the image of Satan removed from the picture. But instead, let it be a voice that is being heard to her, maybe to her ear or to her heart. She is thinking that God told me not to eat this. And now my inner, inner voice is telling me there is no problem in eating this. There is a conflict. And then she makes a decision based on her judgment, her reasoning, which happens to be wrong. Now this is how the conscience work within us. The God tells you the right thing to do 
and the evil tells you the bad thing to do. And within you, you have the conflict between which is good and which is evil. How will you decide which is good and which is not good? That depends on your reasoning based on the judgment you give for that reasoning. This is conscience. Have you heard of the song, Lead Kindly Light? Who wrote it? Yes, Cardinal Newman. Full name is John Henry Newman. Cardinal Newman said, Conscience is a law of mind. It is the messenger of him who both in nature and in grace speaks to us behind a veil and teaches and rules us by his representatives. Conscience is the aboriginal vicar of Christ. Cardinal Newman said, Conscience is the aboriginal vicar of Christ. Aboriginal means inherent. Vicar means a deputy. So, in his words, he emphasizes that conscience is the voice of God that is within us. Now, I would like to give you certain examples from the Holy Bible. The first example is that of Cain and Abel. We all are well familiar with the story of Cain and Abel. What happens when both the brothers, they offer sacrifice to the God. Abel's sacrifice was much loved by the God. God was pleased in his sacrifice and he accepts us while Cain was left behind. This made Cain grow jealous for his brother and this jealous worked out to be anger and in the wrath he kills his brother. So Cain took the life of his brother out of jealousy and hatred for him. What is the act of Cain here? Second story. Have you read about Joseph? Joseph was once tempted by Potiphar's wife, we have read this when he was appointed the ruler by Pharaoh in Egypt. He had to face some hardships with the lady who was Potiphar's wife. And he with all his trust in God denied her request. She pleaded him, she told him, she offered him very high positions, but he denied all that outrightly. He said, I cannot sin against my conscience. I cannot sin against the holiness of my God. And for which he had to face a lot of hardships. He was put in the prison. He was not disheartened by that act, but rather he preferred to live holy. This is the second incident of a person who acted according to his conscience. Coming to the third example in the book of Maccabees, the second book of Maccabees, chapter 7, you read about a woman and her seven sons. The king Antiochus forces them to eat the flesh of swine. They refuse this because it is unlawful according to their beliefs and traditions because the God of Israel had told them not to do that. And they brought up in the right faith, in the right Jewish faith, all of them denied to accept Antiochus instructions. And they were tortured very brutally. One by one, the sons were tortured and killed, but none of them stepped even one step backward from their faith. They stood loyal to their God by not denying what they had been believing until then. So this is the third instance to give you an example for how a conscience work, even in front of torture and death, they stood unshaken. So what does this example tells us? Every person is given 
a chance. Every person is given a choice. Every person is given a circumstance where he has to decide between the good and the evil. So it is the nature of our conscience that helps us to make the right decisions at the right time. Now what is the nature of the conscience? Nature of the conscience means how your conscience is developed. We have an inner voice of God within us right from the time of our birth. It is inherited. But we need to grow it up. We need to mature it in the right Christian manner as we grow up. It need to be nurtured. It need to be protected. And it need to be grown in the right manner. For which the family, the social status, the friend circle, the religious life, everything matters. Now let us have a look at the different types of conscience. There are five different types of conscience as per the lesson given to you. The first one is called as sinful conscience. The second is perplex conscience. The third is scrupulous conscience. The fourth is lax conscience. And the fifth is right conscience. Now what are these five different types? The first one, sinful conscience. We say born criminal. They do not have any goodness in them. And they do not bother. They take a decision that is rather evil. So it is, as I said, born criminal, which may be wrong. It is also a problem with the upbringing of the person. The circumstances have influenced him. There wouldn't have been anybody to show him, to guide him, to counsel him how to convert the evil in him into good. An example to say for this sinful conscience, knowing something it is wrong and doing it, it's something like you buy a cigarette packet, see all the statutory warnings on it, including the the awful pictures that they have depicted that someone who sees it should fear and run away. But still people doesn't bother this mock. Secondly, the perplexed conscience, confused conscience. We are not able to make a decision which is right and which is wrong. Perplexed conscience. That means there is lack of knowledge. What is exactly to be done at that point of time if you are not able to make a clear cut decision that means there is a lack in the knowledge of it. The third type of conscience is scrupulous conscience. Scrupulous means when a person considers an action to be by mistake he has done but it, he thinks it is wrong but he has not committed it willingly or willfully. To give an example for this, probably maybe nowadays we all use internet and sometimes when we browse certain sites, certain things pop up, isn't it? And imagine a child of your age suddenly sees this and then he or she starts feeling guilty thinking that, oh my God, I didn't want to see such bad things but it happened to appear before my eyes. Now I, I have sinned against my holiness. It was too bad on me, now I have sinned. That feeling is scrupulous conscience because he or she has not committed a sin there. It happened by mistake or maybe happened to see, but it depends on how you see it. That is scrupulous conscience. The next type of conscience is lax conscience. That is when an offense is taken lightly. You have committed a sin, but you don't accept it or you justify the sin according to your requirement. You take it lightly. That is called lax conscience. And the last one is the right conscience. A right conscience taken with proper awareness about the good and evil, accepting good and denying evil is the right conscience. So these are the five different types of conscience. The first one is sinful conscience. The second is perplexed conscience. The third is scrupulous conscience, fourth lax conscience and fifth one is the right conscience. So in this lesson we try to understand what is conscience and we know that it is the 
inner voice of God, which helps us to understand and decide which is right and which is wrong. And then we discussed about different types of conscience, the five different types of conscience. With this, I wind up the class for today. Let us continue in the next week for the remaining part of the chapter, which describes the importance of forming Christian conscience and how to, what are the factors to form the Christian conscience. So let us close our eyes, fold our hands in prayer. Father Almighty, we thank you for giving us understanding about what is conscience and what is Christian conscience. Help us to live according to thy will, understanding the right conscience. Help us to lead a holy life. We ask all this in name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.